Hello, everybody, and oh, wrong microphone. Okay, now better. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the apostate prophet who is always reliable and always on time, at least compared to Mohammed. Um, how is everybody doing today? I'm right. I'm just by myself without David Wood because David Wood is traveling. Um, but yeah, no, I'm here, and we have some fantastic stuff to go through, namely. A BBC documentary that is that was in preparation for a quite a long time, which exposes Andrew Tate and his organization even further. And um, I don't know, it's, it's pretty shocking. I saw most of it, saw most of it, and I thought, wow, this is this is this is creepy. But I was kind of uh, passively watching it. I didn't pay attention to it that much. So I guess it will be um, it will be amazing to go through all of that together. Um, David is, I think, attending some conference or something, like a weakling, like wasting time with speaking at conferences or something, some boring stuff. I don't, I don't know about religion or something like that. So, um, meanwhile, we are here doing better stuff. Uh, so how is everyone doing? Let's see. Let's say hello before we start. Ingrid Chile said, hi, AP from Riverside, California. Hello. 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 Uh, is David with your part? Yes. Uh, conference. <laughs> hello, AP. Hello. 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 Um, David is at the War Room Summit. Yes. I don't want to say that publicly, but yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, I don't like the red shirt. I don't like it either. Um, I'm just trying to agree with anything everyone says here. AP is 15 minutes late versus Muhammad, who was 15 days late. Yet, yeah, well, I forgot to say inshallah when I scheduled this live stream, which is why I'm late. So, but hey, I'm here now. So let us start with the Matrix watch party, uh, as Black Angel just pointed out. Uh, Jesus bot said AP you take longer than a woman to get ready. Please let's let's not let's not make this about about women. I, I usually take longer than women. Um all right. <laughs> so um for those who haven't heard, there is like a one hour documentary which uh basically exposes a lot of stuff to the public about um about Andrew Tate. And I want to go through that right now i want i want to go through that right now right now right here live for everybody to see right in front of your eyes it's a pretty terrible accent i'm just practicing right now by the way i've seen that uh <laughs> muhammad hijab and ali dawa published a video which is basically them 15 minutes explaining why they are scared to dip to talk to robert spencer and brother rashid on patrick bet david's show and something like that it's very it's very strange like they published a video in which they basically explained for 50 minutes why they are why it's unfair for them to go there and have a discussion about islam with robert spencer um and how they are scared of that how that is an ambush and they refuse to do that or something like that but um we want to look into that as well, and we will probably make another live stream and um, and with David later this week, uh, and 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 basically review that as well. Um, but hey, let's let's come to Andrew Tate because he's the hero of our time, the great hero, the great wonderful strong man, who, by his own admission, failed brutally in life, and then had to resort to deceiving and using women and scamming others in order to build his wealth and now he argues that he's not guilty at all of nothing so let us look at that guy that wonderful wonderful guy whom people like candace owens promote i hope everybody is ready for this i just got a new i just got a new um i just got a What's it called? A soundboard, a stream deck, but I haven't really set it up yet. I haven't really tried it. I wonder. Let me see. What if I play some some sounds here? I wonder if it works. Let's see. So, what does this do? Can you hear this? 
Does this happen? Is this, is this coming through? Heartbeat sound? Wow. How about this one? Cricket sound. That's cool. It's, it works, right? Yes. Okay, awesome. And bells on. Yay! I have to... <laughs> I have to play with this and put some custom sounds in here. There, uh, there is a lot that I have in my mind to put on here, for for some fun stuff. Uh, I saw people use this forever, and I never got into it. But I finally got one myself, and it's actually pretty cool. Anyway, okay, uh, let's get to the documentary. I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun now with with this stuff. I could even like annoy David when we were live together with some terrible sounds to play in the back. Uh, <laughs> all right. World champion kickboxer, pimp, mafia associated criminal. Surely it can't all be true. Well, it's all true. Few people have become as popular, influential, and seemingly wealthy in such a short space of time as the influencer Andrew Tate. Women are absolutely happy serving a man they respect. They're far more happy with that than they are working some fucking career. In December 2022, Tate was arrested. Did that just say coronavirus party? That's... In Romania, accused of rape and of grooming women into working for him as online sex workers. The world is now focused on his upcoming trial. But the one thing no one has figured out. This is so messed up. Like, uh, lots of conservatives are there thinking, oh, no, he's a wonderful man. He teaches such great value. I mean, and to work focus on his online. This set. here, you see this 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 promotional video here that was published by his own people for his war room, which still exists. Like, this is him, but like pushed by some conservatives who try to sell him to a clueless audience. It's workers. Does, does, does this look conservative here? <laughs> The world is now focused on his upcoming trial. But the one thing no one has figured out is how a failed reality TV contestant became one of the most famous alleged criminals in the world. Surely he didn't do it alone. For two years, I've been investigating his secretive society, the War Room. The War Room is a whirlpool. Once you're in, you're in, and it's hard to get out. Speaking to women who say they were targeted by this shadowy organization. As soon as I walked in the door, he like pushed me to my knees and like smacked me really hard across the face. And whistleblowers who are now ready to reveal what's really going on. Let's not kid ourselves. This is a cult. Who's in charge of the war? Could someone else behind the cult of Andrew Tate? Oh, fuck, there he is, there he is. He's right there. I just saw him come out. Dude, just go, just go. I want to ask you a couple questions. This is actually pretty incredible. Um, I was exposed to some new stuff here that is that was that is quite sinister in this documentary that I had, did not know before, and it gets it gets really messed up. I know uh, we say a lot about the the Andrew Tate cult and the war room, and he did a lot of some really messed up stuff, but. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It gets even more messed up with this documentary. Even more messed up. Uh, but hey, um, I'm doing this live stream here all by myself. I'm wondering if anybody wants to... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I didn't get in touch with anybody who you who I, that I have usually on as a guest. But if anyone wants to join, anyone wants to hop on, anyone I'm familiar with, let me know. Okay. <laughs> So Tate's just released a new video, and based on the influx of Andrew Tate fans in my social media, I'm guessing he mentions me, so let's take a look. We have the DNG on the podcast with us, yes. a DNG t-shirt. You can see it's homeless Matt Shea, who follows us around the world wearing the same clothes every single time, the same jacket. Yeah. And it says DNG on the front. This is so weird. Now, I know you're thinking, this explains what a DNG is. Disgraced news gatherer, deluded narrative generator, discredited news guardian, Dork, nerd, geek, DNG, the DNG Matt Shea. Yeah, so for those who didn't get the context, the guy who created this documentary is Matt Shea, and he also hung out with those people quite a bit, gathered a lot of information, dug deep into this stuff, and they embraced him at first until he started asking questions, then he started making fun of him, and 
uh, targeting him and intimidating him and so on. He's been trolling me ever since last year, when I interviewed women who say he sexually assaulted them. The reporting sparked a backlash against Tate that continues to this day. His arms fell off anyway. Piss off your documentary. Matt. Do another documentary. Nobody cares, Matt. He has no hands, and I think his arms falling off has just told the whole world. That he, he has, has no, no hands. No hands. Tate wasn't always like this. He was much more civil to me when I met him previously. Oh, my best friends. Hello, hello. Great to meet you, man. Good to see you. This place is giant. Welcome to Emergency Meeting, episode 13. We have a special guest, Matt Shea who is uh, internationally renowned and respected. When I first met Tate, he was attracting <laughs> attention for being an overnight success on TikTok. In the space of a month during lockdown... That's how it is with Andrew Tate. If you are on his good side, then you are fantastic. If you are, if you are against him, then you are, you are laughable and whatever it is. He amassed billions of views and became one of the most searched influencers in the world. I perfected this in pimp school. When I got my PhD, it's bang out the machete, boom in her face, and grip her up by the neck. What's up, bitch? His messaging at this stage was misogynistic, but many thought it was an act rather than evidence of something genuinely criminal. He successfully monetized his following into millions of pounds by selling courses, teaching boys and men how to become like him, surrounded by fast cars and women. Now here's the stupid thing. A lot of people still say it's all an act. A lot of people thought genuinely it is all just an act. Um, I, I, I just don't understand. Um, you have to look into it for just a little bit to understand which part is an act and which part is clearly not an act. Sometimes he, he becomes sarcastic and all of that, but his whole message of uh, dominating women, being selfish, uh, building your wealth at all costs, being the predator, pimping women, all of that stuff is not an act, never was an act, never looked like an act. It was all genuine, which is why Andrew Tate actually, uh, his his team, his legal team, they brought that excuse that uh, you know he was just acting to the <laughs> to the court, and um, the judges reviewing his case said that it is entirely unreasonable to just to suggest that the videos are just an act. They they dismissed that right out of the you know, it's 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 nonsense. At one end of the scale, for £39 a month, you could join his Hustlers University, which promised a path to making money online. Above this were bespoke courses on topics like chess, £197, developing an iron mind, £547, and right at the top, his highest valued product, membership to Andrew Tate's war room. I had a school which primarily taught people how to make money online. Okay. The reason I had that school was so that everybody could afford the war room. The war room is a network I have, which is a level above HU. Mm -hmm. Everything I've talked about with brotherhood and people you can trust and capable people, that's what the war room is. Join the war room and you'll learn and there'll be a, there's a spiritual journey involved as well. So the war room is, is kind of like the Illuminati, but cooler for any young man or any man who's serious about his journey or serious about himself. It's the most important place you can be. You're going to learn absolutely everything about the realities of Earth. Tate says the war room is a network of powerful men and those who want to learn from them. They say it promotes brotherhood and is on a mission to reframe traditional masculinity in a positive way. You can currently join for $8,000 a year. Like the Illuminati, but Telegram cooler. And the option to spend even more money by buying exclusive courses and attending... You don't, you don't get this at the Illuminati. You only get this in uh, Andrew Tate's war room. ...and around the world. The war room is led by a group of so-called generals. The most famous are his brother, Tristan, Sartorial Shooter, his head of security and operations, Jonathan, the money pilot, and Iggy Semmelweis, the mysterious self-proclaimed wizard. This guy is the creepiest of all, and he will play a central part in the, in the documentary. Um, this guy is very creepy, Iggy Semmelweis. I didn't even know about this guy. I found out um, later on, only quite recently actually, What's funny is also this guy has me blocked on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I never interacted with him, but he has me blocked on Twitter, which is very, very funny. It's like when you um, when you click on a random profile that you have never seen before, and then it says you are blocked. Like, huh? <laughs> so I had to ask people, who is this? And then I was told that this is the, the, the wizard of the war room who also taught Andrew Tate a lot of things, 
who probably th taught Andrew Tate everything on how to manipulate women and turn them into slaves and all of that. Yeah, I don't know why he has me blocked. I guess he just blocks everyone who is critical of Andrew Tate. I don't know. Very interesting. It's an honor to me. Rumors were circulating about Tate's behavior towards women. And with the war room shrouded in secrecy, I couldn't help but wonder what was really going on inside. What were these generals teaching the men who joined? What did they get for their money? So I went inside the organization, even participating in an initiation ritual that involved a cage fight with a professional MMA fighter. But every time I tried to find out what was really going on, a war room general would stop us from speaking to people. We've been told that we're not allowed to talk to anyone. <laughs> what about in passing, asking people like, what single question? Let me run this by Tate before we film. So we can't speak to anyone? Okay. Though Tate and his generals tried their best to keep me out, I felt something more was happening when through a hotel window, I saw a group of men photographing naked women. Look at that. I saw that previously. The guy had made, made this documentary in the past um, where he catches this footage as he leaves. That there is basically a room, room up there that uh, war room members and others go to. And you see from here that there are naked women with their photos being taken, which is very interesting. It's probably to prepare them for, uh, to make society better and to bring traditional values back. Yeah. Right, okay. The online influencer Andrew Tate has been detained in Romania as part of a human trafficking and rape investigation. Police found guns, knives and wads of cash. Mr. Tate was arrested, as was his brother Tristan. On the 29th of December 2022, Tate was arrested by Romanian authorities, accused of manipulating women into webcam sex work. It's alleged that he used the lover boy method as part of his recruitment process. This is a type of grooming in which a person presents themselves as romantically interested in someone, promising them a relationship, but with the sole purpose of manipulating them into sex work. The authorities are focusing their investigation on Andrew Tate and his brother. But what I'm interested in is what's going on at the top level of his organization. What? This is the war room, war room members, and the war room actually posts this stuff with these people's faces censored. It doesn't look suspicious at all, right? Is happening inside the war room. To find out, I've enlisted the help of someone who says he can show me what the organization's real purpose is. So, uh, quickly to clarify here, um, he just mentioned uh, the lover boy method, which Andrew Tate is accused of, which which he did, which he did practice, and um, that is human trafficking. So, some people don't understand what human trafficking is, or don't understand uh, if that is if what he did is technically human trafficking. It technically absolutely is by the standards of the the United Nations, by uh, the vast majority of countries around the world um, for decades and by now at least for 20 years, it is officially recognized as um, human trafficking. And in fact, it might be the, the most popular, the most common form of human trafficking, where um, they don't go around kidnapping people and putting them in cages and chains and spying and selling them. Uh, what they do is they, they win over the confidence of their victims, mostly women and um, secondly, children, and uh, but also men and um, promise them something completely different, something that will make them feel very willing and trusting and slowly turn them into workers and through manipulation because humans can be manipulated. That's how it works. Yeah. And internationally, that is human trafficking. It is recognized as human trafficking. It's a crime and he will probably pay for that. This is. So as well as hundreds of thousands of Andrew Tate fans, one of the things that's happening with the internet. Greg Anthony, if Tate is guilty of sex trafficking, then so is every pornographer, but that's anti-Semitic. No, it's uh, first off, nothing to do, the, the last part has nothing to do with, with the issue at all. Secondly, no, completely different thing. Um, if you run a business, for example, uh, where porn is being produced, now no matter if you find this immoral or moral, and, and people can come and work there and get out. That has nothing to do with what is happening here. If a woman uh, 
creates her own things online or a man creates her own content his own content online and makes money with that no matter if you find that moral or immoral it has nothing to do with what with, with with this here with this the problem is not that uh pornography is being pr uh, produced the problem is not that uh, some work is being done the problem is that people are manipulated coerced or otherwise brought into pornography through different means that is that is what is illegal about it that's the illegal part the illegal part is not setting up a business and having people work for you who can come and go that's not the problem here if you can't understand this then i don't know how to help you <laughs> and andrew tate is the rise of these kind of internet sleuths who are just obsessed with investigating andrew tate but the most prolific one by far is a man who goes by the name of Crab Crawler on Twitter. And he has access, he says, to the internal chat logs of Andrew Tate's war room. So we've come to Cleveland to pay him a visit. Hey there, Matt. Nick, hello. Good to meet you in real life. Yeah. This guy, in this guy was the primary guy who was exposing um, Andrew Tate on Twitter um, until he was banned from Twitter. He was banned from Twitter um, after interacting with some with some journalists or something. I don't know what happened, but he was basically taken down by Twitter in the middle of exposing all the 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 Andrew Tate team and all their crimes and then um he turned toward working with matt shea and creating this documentary and things became even worse for andrew tate <laughs> cleveland to talk about a serious subject crab crawler developed a platform as a hard right journalist and blogger where he first encountered tate then a rising star of the right who is going by his former kickboxing title cobra tate so do you consider yourself part of the kind of right wing? Not anymore. So you, this has actually changed your kind of political views, this whole experience. It corrected me back towards the center again. What really rattled me the most was the silence from some right wing figures that really should have spoken up about this and had their horse in this race. Crab Crawler claims he's now a reformed character and recently was handed a treasure trove, 12,000 pages of encrypted messages sent by hundreds of war members over the course of two years. Now that I have these chat logs, these crazy this mind blowing chat banned. logs. Yes, he, he is still banned. He has never been unbanned on Elon Musk's free speech platform. I can see how complex the situation really is beyond the surface. So what is the war room? Getting into the war room means you have to buy Andrew Tate's courses. You're basically brought into the school to learn to become like Andrew Tate. And that includes the PhD. Greg Anthony, I don't know how to make this uh, clearer to you. Um, maybe you should contest uh, the United Nations and all the organizations around the world, all the experts on human trafficking, literally every organization that deals with human trafficking. And you should tell them, hey, guys, you all have been doing it wrong. You are all dumb you have all been doing this completely wrong you don't understand this i understand what human trafficking really is i understand that the lover boy method is actually not a bad thing at all i can correct all of you let me get rid of the united nations let me get rid of organizations against human trafficking let me get rid of all of this and all of that and let us set it straight let me make the rules here and explain to everybody deceiving people and turning them into workers through manipulation is not a bad thing. It's not a crime. It's, it's not a bad thing at all. That's not trafficking. Only the way I saw it in those Hollywood movies when I was a child, where they approach with the, those black vans with tinted glasses and kidnap people from the street and throw them in there and then chain them and bring them to some shady underground places in the dark, dirty dungeons of Paris and sell them to wealthy guys from the Middle East. That is trafficking. Uh, or, uh, by the way, also, uh, necessarily, as you can all predict, 
Jeffrey Epstein is not a trafficker either. No, he is not a trafficker either because he doesn't fit the criteria. Because deceiving people, which is what Jeffrey Epstein did, is not a crime. So why are we accusing Jeffrey Epstein? Why are we accusing all of the other human traffickers, most of them? Let them all go. Let them all out. Let people lie. Let people deceive. Let people turn others into slaves through deception. Let me make this clear to you. Let me say you are easily manipulated. Maybe you're not, right? But maybe maybe you are. Given the, the objections that you present here, I don't expect very much from you um, intellectually. But uh, maybe you are easily manipulated, like the way you are manipulated by Andrew Tate here. And um, somebody approaches you builds a personal relationship with you on a very deep level. While you feel weak, you don't have much in life, you feel hope and love from this person who are, that approached you. And that person may, gives you so many promises of transferring you to a different country, giving you everything, giving you wealth, promising a wonderful future for you where you will fulfill this dream and that dream and that dream. And you go there with those hopes People tell you, hey, you know, you shouldn't trust that person. But you think, I know, I know, I know. But I believe that I'm onto something here. I believe this is truly the opportunity of my life. And I really love this person so much. And with that deep manipulation, with that self-deception and deception by that person, you go there, you continue being manipulated while that person had the goal from the very beginning to simply pull you over there and use you for their own gain for money or for different things and you're not only you're not the only victim that person did the same thing to many others and you didn't know any of that maybe later you found out but you somehow rationalize it because humans can be pretty naive and you can rationalize anything in your mind because you are just so tempted and so taken over by your feelings that is human trafficking if you want to accept it, I don't really care. Nobody cares if you want to accept that or not. That is human trafficking. That is a crime. Now you can you can come out here and say, no, I and all of these geniuses on the internet, we do not agree that this is human trafficking. Well, nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit what you think. That's human trafficking, and they will be judged and sentenced accordingly. So, boo-hoo. HD course of how he lures women into becoming cam girls. The online course that Crabcrawler is referring to is called the PhD or Pimping Hose Degree. It has been removed from Tate's website, but is a required course to join the elites in the war room, costing an additional 337 pounds. The PhD is taught by Andrew Tate himself, and in private, behind a paywall, he says it teaches men a method for seducing women into a relationship and then gradually manipulating them into working for you in online sex work. The PhD course. Uh, let's quickly look at that. I will be teaching you every step to building a girl who is submissive, loyal, and in love with you. From your first message to testing if you want to keep her to as long as you want the relationship to go on. I am the most capable man in the world to teach you this power. And I am 100% confident in my program. I have a warning. There is a responsibility when you have someone completely loyal to you. I've had some girls for over a decade when someone gives themselves to you absolutely their life path is in your hands be wise this is so messed up and if you if you followed the case and you saw some of the messages uh that he, andrew tate had with uh, those girls and with other people in the in the background and i'm sure we will see some of those it's really messed up how these people think they are in possession of other humans and gradually manipulating them into working for you in online sex work. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with a girl. You have to fuck them and they have to love you. It's, it's, it's essential to the business. The first thing that's clear from looking at these encrypted war room communications is that Tate and the generals are pushing the PhD course to members. Andrew Tate says you have to add the PhD program to convert girls to work. PhD is essential. Essential. Cam course alone won't do it. Imping host degree for those who missed it. It's difficult to know when members are simply bragging, but 
These encrypted messages show the men in the war room feeding back to Tate and the generals how they were putting into action the teachings from the PhD course. They call this showing receipts. Ah. <sighs> Attached as a receipt, got my girl to get my name tattooed on her body. And I mean, having having somebody's name tattooed on someone's body is in and of itself not really the, 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 the issue, right? The issue here is that the guy here uses this woman as a tool to make money. That's the whole purpose here, the, the primary motivation. And he's like, hey, guys, look, I achieved something. I made her put my name on her body as a tattoo. Think about it. These people, they are not in a deep relationship. They're not like, yeah, we are here for each other. You belong to me and I belong to you. So why don't you put my name on your body? No, it's you are mine. I will make money off of you as long as you are useful. So put my name on your body. Men all uh, I've had my first girl to pass PhD test, pimping host degree test for OnlyFans. She seems to be more than just a short-term asset. She even said she loved me. She even said she loved me. See, what is being, what's happening here is people thanking Andrew Tate because he taught them how to use deception and manipulation to turn these women into assets who are loyal to them, who love them and and all that stuff it's <laughs> also brag about their control over women by sharing examples of the punishments they've meted out on them uh... okay i took our keyboard and hit her in the head she went in the room and worked seven hours without any break. This guy is proud of that. Proud of that. These are verified messages, authenticated, verified messages from the war room, from Andrew Tate's people who pay a lot of money to learn these tactics from him and to then brag to him. And some absolute people then really comment are like no this is all just propaganda andrew tate did nothing wrong he's just making people's lives better this is some guy bragging about how he hit the woman who trusts him and loves him in the head with a keyboard to send her back into her room and make her work seven hours without a break and then Candace Owens will come and will be like, no, people are just attacking Andrew Tate because he has such a positive message. Although there are some things I don't agree with. Oh my, I'm really, I'm really holding back so much. It's... Sleeping on the concrete floored garage with no air conditioning, spiders and roaches. This is what the guy brags about making the girl sleep in there. They're eager to show off to other members when their financial exploitation of women has produced lucrative results. I want to go through that too. They're eager to show off to other members. When Camming is what the war room calls the mechanism we use to monetize females. Webcam is but one of the ways we use to accomplish that. Other ways include she's a real estate so, I don't know how you say that, who brings us deals to increase our wealth. She's a businesswoman who builds and runs income producing business ventures of which we control all the money. She's a trust fund kid who gives us total control of her finances. She's a, and gives us her paycheck every day, every payday to use as we see fit. We always seek women who will cam for us. And Tate says, correct. Or the guy who says this is Iggy Semmelweis, the guy we just talked about. When their financial exploitation of women has produced lucrative results. It's a PhD receipt. That's the new whip. That's the whip that my girl bought for me, registered in my name. All possible because of the PhD. That's the car that he got from, from this. Uh... <laughs> He's not bragging about it, but God damn it. Um, 
First seven sessions on strip chat with my new girl. To be honest, I don't know where I'd make nearly three thousand five hundred dollars in a week. And these guys are seen as strong men. Strong men. Strong men who use their most primitive urges, and the only thing that they have that they are men. If they work out, they might have a superior, uh, strong body. What can they do? Oh, go and exploit women, mistreat them, manipulate them when necessary, beat them, make them work for me, and get rich. See how strong I am. See how confident I am. See what a man I am. That's what these guys are. I hope they all rot in prison. It's a PhD receipt. That's the new whip. That's the whip that my girl bought. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is the car that he got. This is what he brags with. I don't. I don't, I don't really. For me, I'm registered really in my name, all possible because of the PhD. So, Crab Crawler has just handed us almost twelve thousand pages of internal war and Telegram chats. It's going to take a while to go through, but. This is the war of members talking unfiltered when they don't think anyone's listening in. And from these conversations, it seems pretty clear that the war is about a lot more than just positive masculinity. Imagine watching this and still thinking, no, it's the Matrix. The Matrix. The Matrix is making them look bad. They did nothing wrong. After verifying the authenticity of these messages by speaking to the war insider who leaked them to Crowdcrawler, we begin to go through them in detail and start to notice something. The person who appears to push the PhD course most frequently to members is the Warham general and self-proclaimed wizard called Iggy Semmelweis. From his messages, manipulating women into sex work seems central to the Warham's agenda. It's well known that Tate himself is under investigation for using the lover boy method to coerce women into sex work, but the evidence suggests that it isn't just Tate allegedly using this method the Warham Generals are actively teaching it to members, making this potentially much wider than we thought. The court in Romania has agreed to allow the controversial social media influencer Andrew Tate to leave prison and move into house arrest. On March 31st, the Tate brothers win a court appeal to be released under house arrest while the authorities continue their investigation. This means we may have a chance to ask him if he is the leader of a global grooming organization. Freedom at last. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> when they got out of out of uh, jail to go to house arrest, house arrest, uh, they said, "We are free. See, we are free. This shows that they have nothing on us. There, there is no freedom in this at all. They just moved to a different form of being held." while the investigations are ongoing. And then it's it's concluded and they are moved from house arrest to, uh, what's it called, judicial uh, control, where they can only stay within Bucharest and, and, the, and that province. And when that happened, he was also like, yeah, freedom, we are free, you see. None of that is freedom. Nothing changed at all. They're still under investigation. The charges have been uh pressed they are the trial is waiting the trial is coming the trial will eventually be done and then we will see if he gets his freedom or not uh who said something that i just saw wait a minute um I just saw a, uh, saw a message here. Uh Talitha Kumi said did you send this documentary to Candace Owens did she research this? <laughs> oh yeah here I do not believe uh, that Kenneth Owens actually cares about facts. I I think it's pretty obvious to me. She either, she's either the worst journalist the world has seen or she doesn't care about the truth. And to me, it's quite obvious. Yes, she is incompetent in what she does, but it's quite obvious that she has a bias and she does not care about the truth. If people, if people think that she's a wonderful, honest person. She's she's all about the truth. I'm sorry, but you are being deceived. 
Candace Owens is not somebody who cares about the truth. She cares about the grift. She cares about the money. She cares about the influence, the connections. She is connected to Andrew Tate and, and his people. Um, she does not care at all. You can put the truth in her face. She will ignore you and block you and still talk about um, how Andrew Tate is being targeted because he has a positive message for people. She is a completely deceptive, unreliable charlatan. You can't trust her. Well, it isn't Matt. Andrew, hey. Mr. Honest Journalism. Yeah, that's what I, that's how I like to think of myself. I mean, look, the, the main reason I'm calling is I want to see whether you were up for doing another interview. You do an interview with me, you might have for a little bit, but I can do an interview with anyone. So why would I do an interview with you? Because we have a history and there are still unanswered questions that I want to put to you. All these reporters who want to say bad things about me, I get to choose which reporter on the plan gets to become relevant via proxy because I am the most relevant person and I get to do the charitable act of allowing somebody to sit next to me and ask me questions. I'm going to think about it, Matt, because I'm the one who matters here. But because of our history... Would you, would you bring me a box of chocolates? You promise to bring me a box of chocolates. That will increase your chances. And I'll give you an answer within 24 hours. You have to promise me that. Don't lie to me. I'll, I'll check with my superiors whether I can send you a box of chocolates. You let me know about the chocolates, man. Have okay. One, one quick thing. Okay. This is very bizarre, but uh, pay attention to the box of chocolates thing. As dumb as it may seem, it plays a role here. I think he thinks he's even more the messiah than he was before. He said he was the most relevant person in the world. And then there's this whole power game of having to bring him a box of chocolates. So bizarre. Now I need to find out if I legally can bring him a box of chocolates or whether that's considered bribery. <laughs> I am the most relevant person. might become the most relevant person in prison. Uh... Tate's trolling of me always ramps up when he's under threat. I'm worried he's found out we're investigating the war room. <laughs> you see, isn't the world beautiful? Vice to a piece on Tate. Tate goes to jail. God releases me. Matt, BBC, whoever, Matrix agent number 399 begs for another interview. Kind of like, I never lose. <laughs> what a delusional, I, I don't understand. Sometimes I think, um, I think this is all, I think he's he's supposed to, maybe he's being manipulated by somebody else also. And he, he thinks, if I go to prison, I will become a hero. So therefore I never lose. But you are losing, man. You are losing and you are losing it too. I mean, he tweeted just a few months ago about how, he, he has gotten really bad since he went to jail. He can't sleep anymore. He just walks around aimlessly. And then he was like, but no, no, no. I would normally break down and I would be depressed, but no, I am not that guy. You will lose in the end, man. You already lost a lot. He even lost all his, his cars that he always brags about. I really never thought I would meet this man again in my life. Hey, how's it going? I'll turn on Hi. subscriber only mode for the trolls. Is Andrew coming out to meet us? Uh, yeah, who are you? Matt from the BBC. All right, I'm gonna let him know. Okay, great, thank All you. Right. Thanks. I guarantee he's gonna film it and he's gonna put it on Twitter. Good morning. And you want breakfast? Yeah, I love breakfast, but a very important interview today. Perfect, thank you. A very important interview today with a very uh, renowned, esteemed, well-known journalist. 
you know, Matt Shea is a dork. It's so funny how predictable this is. He just said, I guarantee that he is going to film this and put it on the internet. And yes, that's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> on Earth, and DNG. It's been now 15 minutes. There is. There is a. Please, can I have another interview? Please. <laughs> Gee! Gee! What a door! Trolling the press is Tate's key tactic for fighting back against what he. <laughs> she reminds me of those of of some corny villain in the in those terrible movies where they just look like they just look dirty, defeated, but they still think everything is going their way and they are laughing about it. <laughs> in as fancy as the Matrix, a global conspiracy that aims to silence him, his fans buy into this, sending me scores of death threats ranging from. I'm going to wait outside your office and slit your throat to there are individuals who will dismember you in front of your parents. Oh, looks like Andrew Tate did nothing wrong. And you know, these guys are just, they have nothing at all. Right? Why is he here to do it? About what about the most famous man in the world, the most influential man in the world, the world of the culture, the person who's going to save my heart, me. They're literally agents of the Matrix. Still there. <laughs> I really want to when he when his sentence is announced and he eventually uh when when he pays for the stuff that he has done, I just want this clip to be taken and put next to, you know, his sentence being, or, 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 or next to footage of him going to prison. I don't know, something like that. That would be hilarious. I think everybody should just troll him when he gets bad news from this case and just laugh like this while pointing at him. Wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> that should be a meme. It should become a new meme. And even like the same thing could be done once he's in prison. And anyway, be great. He's coping. He's coping. This is my interview. This is all I have to say to him. Okay, so I spoke with Andrew, yeah. and uh, you either give him the chocolate and okay. you have an interview, or you don't, and you don't have. So where's the chocolate? Where's he? He's inside. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, if he comes out, give him the chocolate first. No, I'm not going to give you the chocolate. If he comes out, I'll give it to him. You either going to give me the chocolate. I'm going to give him the chocolate. You'll have an interview. If not, this is getting quite silly, though. Okay. Andrew's being accused of some very serious crimes. Yep. He should take this seriously. So you're going to be uh, giving him the chocolate. No, I told you I would give it to him when he comes out. And I told you that I need to check it now. You must realize how silly this looks. See you. This is so ridiculous. Imagine like something really serious is going on here. You want to have a conversation. You want to have a discussion about this. And the other side is just laughing, being stupid like this. <laughs> It's, it's it feels like in high school. Uh, you know the worst thing? I don't feel sorry for him. One percent. Neither should anyone else. These are the worst type of people. <laughs> Says the sex trafficker. The sex trafficker who brags about humiliating and scamming, ripping off other people who brags about somebody losing everything to his scam, says, these are the worst kind of people. <laughs> yes, man. I don't use Skype for uh, streams. 
I don't know who's asking. Hi, Andrew. No, I don't want to do a quick interview. I want to do an in-depth, detailed interview. My first interview under house arrest is going to be world-breaking. It's going to be massive, perhaps the biggest internet interview of the year, perhaps of the Zombie Dingo said sex trafficking, are you insane? No, apparently uh, you don't know, but yeah, he's actually a sex trafficker and he, he is accused of sex trafficking and investigated for sex trafficking and indeed guilty of sex trafficking according to the numerous pieces of evidence that we have. If you think that he's not a trafficker, I hope you also think that Jeffrey Epstein is not a trafficker because you would have to apply very similar standards. Remember, for all those who say, no, he's not a sex trafficker, no, and who think Jeffrey Epstein is a sex trafficker, Jeffrey Epstein didn't do what you think he did. He didn't put children in boxes and containers and ship them across borders. He employed people. He employed them, deceived them, made them work for him, groomed them slowly. The same thing that Andrew Tate did. These two people did not kidnap children and put them in containers and whatever you, whatever the hell you think they did. They deceived people into becoming their, their workers, their slaves. They are traffickers. This is trafficking. Read the indictment. Read the accusations. Read the evidence. Engage with the stuff that is out there. You can find it everywhere by now. I made videos about this. I linked a lot of stuff. They go through them. Don't come here with your idiotic uh, fanboying for Andrew Tate and 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 go trafficking. <laughs> this is ridiculous, dude. Wake up. <laughs> okay. I own the culture, and I want to do it properly. I want to, you to give you the chance to give your side of the story. That's why I'm here. Oh, what? Properly. Year, perhaps of the decade. I own the culture, and I want to do it properly. Did he say, I own the culture? Is that what he's just saying right now? Did, did, did I hear this correctly? Is, is that what he's saying? That's what he's saying, right? Wow, man. I want you to decade. I own the internet interview of the year, perhaps of the decade. I own the culture, and I want to do it properly. I want you to give you the chance to give your side of the story. That's why I'm. And the problem is not just that some delusional guy here says dumb stuff like this. It's also that there are lots of people out there, lots of dumb minions out there, who fanboy for him, who are his fanboys. And who come here like little dumb idiots. And we're like, yes, he owns us all. He owns us, yes, and we are proud. We are happy. He owns us. Andrew Tate is our god. He's our master. He's our daddy. He owns all of us. And we are so happy. Please don't say anything bad about him. I'm here. Oh, you're giving me a chance. You're such a nice guy. Because listen, these accusations are coming out regardless. Please, Matthew, you're not giving me a chance. I'm giving you a chance. I've given you a very fair parameter. It's a parameter that you can either adhere to or you can go home and fly home economy on Wizz Air. I don't give a fuck. Up to you. Stop calling me. You know the parameter. You decide. So, so, so that's your response to the accusations. Hmm. Okay. With Tate refusing to speak to us, to get any answers about whether the war room uses the Loverboy method to groom women they want to recruit into webcam, we'll need to speak to those women themselves. Our wait, 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 wait. Okay, uh, sorry, I missed I missed part of the chat here. Um, Christian Prince is in the chat. Uh, I see. Christian Prince wants to come on on Skype. Okay, um, I don't use Skype for live streams and to connect. I just use uh, StreamYard. Um, but yeah. No, right now I just want to continue this way. But we can talk some other time. Investigation has found that as of August 2022, there were 434 members of the Warum all around the world. We have identified 40... Want me to raise the volume? What? Isn't this loud enough? ...five potential victims who are mentioned in Crabcrawler's chat logs. Though with limited information, the true number is likely much higher. 
two of these women have agreed to meet with us, one in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and one on the west coast of the U.S. Which volume are you talking about? Are you talking about the volume of the video or my volume? I don't know. <laughs> to protect this woman's identity, she's going by the alias Amanda. Hi. Hi, Amanda. How's it going? Good. How are you? Okay, volume was good. I want to turn this thing here off. I can't mess with the volume right now. Otherwise, all of this starts going kind of weird. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thanks for letting us in. The man uh, Amanda claims groomed her into online sex work is one of the warm generals, Jonathan Bowe, a.k.a. the money pilot, because he's a retired U.S. Air Force pilot and currently works for Delta. I had been chatting uh, with this guy that I met on Tinder, and we had been talking for like a couple months about like wanting to meet. You know, I was uh 21 um and you know i wasn't making any money i was okay uh just give me a moment sorry i have to fix this screen here um uh no i was okay here it is back is young and in a very vulnerable position I didn't feel like I myself had a lot to offer. So this like older guy kind of being into me, it was attractive. And we met and we like went out on a date. I, I wouldn't really say it was much of a date. He like picked me up and we went to like a hotel room and slept together. Uh, and the next morning he sent me a text. He asked me if I was interested in working with him on webcam. I kind of knew of webcam, but not really. Um, and I instantly was like, no, like, uh, I don't want to do it. I have no interest in this. Up until that first mention of webcam, he had portrayed himself as someone who was romantically interested in you? Absolutely, yeah. And in your mind, this was a date, a relationship? Yeah, it was. And I continued seeing this guy, like, uh, we chatted all the time. And he That's exactly how, how Andrew Tate uh, teaches on his, on, his, um, on his PhD program, his war room, the whole time. She's talking about uh, another guy who is a member of Andrew Tate's war room. Who learns from him but this is basically how andrew tate has taught it the entire time um what he does is he says you build a relationship with them on you gave them the you give them the impression that this is all just romantic you care about them you want to uh have a wonderful life with them and, and all of that and then only later slowly once you have them you begin introducing the whole webcam business stuff to them and of course, over the years, um, Andrew Tate and the others developed that further and um, advanced their their methods of how to introduce all of that, how to do all of that. And we went through some really creepy messages where he uh, shows to his war room members how he um, how he lies to the woman about her own family. Uh, about people that says uh don't go back home where you came from there are lots of people who want to harm you i know about this and so on lots of man manipulation tactics promises her uh, a wonderful life then lets her starve makes her think that she has to somehow work and contribute to uh, their life together um uses another woman to to um to give her the option of working on webcam, making it look like it's not his purpose to make her work in webcam. It is just an opportunity that's that happens to be there. And so on, just deception from beginning to end. He was really sweet and just kind of like a, a nice person to have in my life. And if I would complain about anything in my life, he'd be like, well, I have a solution for you. Thousands of miles away in Buenos Aires, a woman we are calling Maria has a similar story. She met the man who she says groomed her when she was 20. It all started when I matched with a random guy, a cute one on Tinder. He told me, let's go out, let's have dinner. 
After that, we start. Bernadette Bulldozer said, "Have you heard of James James Lindsay? I have heard. Isn't that the guy? I, I don't know. He's on Twitter. I saw him several times. I think he has a profile picture where he sits on a chair. Not sure, but I don't know anything about him. No idea." Uh, another super chat, thank you, said, the more I learn about Islam, the more I believe it's Gnostic. If you want to understand my perspective, watch any videos by James Lindsay on it. Interesting. Interesting. I think it, Islam certainly um, stole a lot of Gnostic ideas without knowing what it's actually stealing, especially um, the whole idea that Jesus wasn't killed and crucified, but that somebody else was um, you know, put on the cross and killed instead of him um and that he was that, that it wasn't that it was made to look like jesus that that's a gnostic idea or an idea found in different um later christian heretical sects uh it, it looks like islam adopted those ideas without really knowing what it's adopting so yeah might be some truth to that not sure um Hubert Kirk said, imagine in your old age that your contribution to humankind was training hundreds of men into being sex traffickers. That should be their legacy. And a lot of people out there nowadays who have for years said, we are against grooming, we are against sexual crime, sex perversions, have been supportive of these guys, of Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate and their gang, despite the fact that they have been massively engaged in sex trafficking and grooming and everything else remember andrew tate is on camera admitting that he uh that he groomed a 15 year old girl again uh i want to compare this to jeffrey epstein jeffrey epstein's youngest victim was 14. andrew tate's youngest was 15 according to what we know so far maybe there's more i don't know but yeah that's how it is <clears throat> Jörg Asmussen made a super chat. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, taste, Tate, taste, Tate is like a postmodern Islamic snidely whiplash. Uh, and Gore Noise Bulldozer said GG and Seth Putnam have contributed better than AT. Who is GG? None of that says anything to me. I, maybe I'm out of touch. I don't know. seeing each other and it was more serious. He asked me to come live with him for a bit because he wanted to be with me all the time and he missed me a lot. I was like young and I didn't knew or experience something like that before. He was my first boyfriend. At that time I was really in love with this person and it was the first time I ever felt this connection. I remember he saying, you seem like a girl that is going to help me a lot. And he kept repeat, repeating that, like, you're going to help me. You don't know how yet, but you're going to do so. And you're going to be glad that you do it. And then I think one month or maybe two months out of dating. And he asked me, hey, you want to do an elephant? I think at that time in my life, I just wanted like security and someone to be there for me. And here was this guy and I had some things happen in my life. Like I lost my job and. There are some incel imbeciles out there who say all they did was just employ these women in, in, in an online webcam business or in porn. What's wrong with that? A lot of others do it too. All they did was just to hire these women. The women went into there knowingly. There are two scenarios, two scenarios. One of these scenarios is that somebody goes to a woman and from the beginning says to her, hey, do you want to work in, in you know, webcam business with me? Hey, do you want to work in porn with me? I think you are very attractive and I want to hire you. I think together we can make a lot of money. And the woman then says, yeah, okay, let's try it. Let's do it. That scenario would be what you are describing. And I could not sit here and think, okay, there, there is, I could not sit here and think this is criminal. This is terrible. This is sinister. This is messed up. In that case, things would be not very really much out of the ordinary. But then there is another case 
where people are taught to deliberately target women, to look for the vulnerable ones, to make empty promises, and to only later reveal that they want them to work on webcam while still making them believe that this wasn't actually the primary purpose, that this just happens to be something that they brought along the way, that they are actually just romantically interested in those women, where they trick them, where they this deliberately target vulnerable women. Now, some idiots want to say, well, aren't those women, um, you know, isn't it their own fault? Are, are you saying women can't make their own decisions? They are specifically teaching others to target vulnerable ones, vulnerable people who will become obedient, who will do these things, who will listen to them, because not every woman is that way. They target specific ones and test them to then turn them into their workers. That is what is happening. Two scenarios. One of them includes somebody just employing someone who want, who does something. Somebody just employing somebody who agrees to become a uh, a porn actress or an online model. The other one is somebody deceiving someone through false feelings with the whole purpose of just turning them into porn workers or online cameo workers, whatever it is. That is the difference. If you think there is nothing wrong with this one, if you think that's all the same thing, I don't know. I think maybe you should be put into a into a camp and <laughs> maybe you should go to a system where you are educated on how to treat fellow human beings. Maybe you should maybe you should be you should go to some mandatory school, to some mandatory classes where you are taught what it means to exploit other human beings, what it means to, to ask for the, the willingness, the consent of other human beings. Maybe you should get that education because obviously you are not aware of how it works. Obviously you are not aware of human rights. Obviously you are not aware that it is not acceptable to society to go around deceiving people, manipulating people, turning them into slaves. And as we have seen, on these occasions to apply violence and threats and coercion and other things to them in order to keep them as slaves. If you still think that this is just like regular, you know, modeling or just like regular porn, these guys did nothing wrong. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't think you are smart. I think you are a complete moron or you are not a healthy member of society and you should probably go to some mandatory education to learn what it means to live with other human beings. <sighs> I was like, okay, I think I might like be interested in like webcamming. And do you realize now that that was his intention all along? Yes, yes. Both of these women's alleged groomers used the same method to gradually manipulate them into webcam. It all began with the same question that Tate had asked me. He told me, let's go out, let's have dinner, but we mind to bring a chocolate. He also asked me to bring him. Oh, here's, here's the detail. Question that Tate had asked me. He told me, let's go out, let's have dinner, but we mind to bring a chocolate. He also asked me to bring him like a unique kind of chocolate on the date, which was like a bit weird. Asking for chocolate is the first test to see how susceptible a person is to control. Notice, remember um, earlier in this in this uh, documentary, when Maché was wanting to meet Andrew Tate to, for an interview, he told him to bring him chocolate. And now we hear from the girls that when they were approached by Andrew Tate's war room members, they were also told to bring some chocolate to their first date. And we see now in war room chats also that they kept telling each other to tell the girls to bring chocolate. And we will now learn more about this. This is, you, you might think chocolate. What is, what is with chocolate? It's a manipulation tactic, apparently. 
Zipporah, I'm telling you, it's a very important element, that control. Because once the money starts pouring in, the girls are like, well, what the fuck do I need this dude for? And they will leave if you don't have every aspect of control. It was like those guys who make it hypnotize the snakes because whatever he said, I will do. I felt like I had no control over my life. He has control of everything, so is it like worth it to leave? I'm not sure if they're explaining this here. I, I feel like I remember them explaining this more in detail in some chat or something, but uh, the specific instruction to tell the girls to bring chocolate to their first date is to test um, how committed they are, to test, uh, to do a small test of loyalty, a small test of commitment. And the fact that all of the war room members are basically taught to do this is, is pretty cultish and weird. I remember not being able to see my friends, not even my family. I have 95% control over her mind, no friends, no going out without me. I remember not being able to see my friends, not even my family, like he was like, you're staying here with me. There's no such thing as a perfect woman. If you want a woman who's perfect for you, you must build her to be perfect for you. He would be like, I have... Jeez. Jeez, got to keep their women occupied with tasks, missions. Keep them busy and proving their devotion. Like a mission for you. So I have this mission, we have this mission. The mission for today is this. The mission for tomorrow is this. He'd ask me to like clean his apartment. Start to say, okay, please clean my house, do my chores. That kind of humbling bullshit. That's what you want. That's what you want. You said to be like, okay, I need a coffee. Go make me a coffee. I remember him being awake at 6 a.m. He forced me to wake up, make him coffee, and then I could go to sleep again. When I, like, would do well. The Lord's Day Ministry said, seriously, though, is, is Andrew Tate retarded? Um, that's an interesting question, and I often ask myself the same thing when I think about the fact that he published lots of videos in which he basically commits to having uh in, in, in which in which he admits to having committed crimes so it's an interesting question well i was like rewarded this is uh iggy samuel says this is pavlovian conditioning this is opera uh, op operant conditioning isn't it called I forgot. This is how you train dogs. Um, you like it. Here he is appealing to uh, basic ideas of psychology, very basic ideas of psychology. Uh, I, I, I feel like this is what I learned within my first weeks of taking my psychology 101 class. Um, and he's basically telling people that this is how they are supposed to treat the women that they hire. The method that was applied to dogs. Attention. You're going to reward them for their good work with attention. The easiest way to give a girl attention is to fuck them. Sex was my reward. You sex a lot to manipulate me. He would like whisper. What? What? In, <laughs> even better, anchor her orgasm to your voice, whispering the word money in her ear. <laughs> things about like money into my ear he was obsessed with money <laughs> if you fuck Come for me baby money 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 uh good wow. sit down with her and say look we're already fucking rich together the way he approached me with the getting web am i taking this too literally where you have it where you <laughs> This is such a bizarrely stupid, uh, ridiculous, dark, twisted, messed up situation. What? 
Even better, anchor her orgasms to your voice, whispering the word money in her ear. So he has a very rudimentary understanding of psychology here where he thinks when you have sex with the woman and she's having an orgasm, which is a moment where she will feel ultimate pleasure, you are supposed to whisper money into her ears with your voice so that she associates that with amazing things. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to think that this is a very stupid understanding of uh, of conditioning a person. I don't know, maybe it works on a level. Or whether I'm more to focus on the fact that this is completely messed up. It's about like money into my ear. He was obsessed with money. If you fucked her, good. Sit down with her and say, look, we're gonna get fucking rich together. The way he approached me with the getting webcam was, you want to make money to uh, let's do something, it's going to be fun. You make a ton of money, like we'll do this together. You could not do a business relationship with a female. It doesn't work. That's when. This orgasm conditionally might work. It probably works with uh, all the Andrew Tate fans that you see on the internet. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how it's happening, but I feel like uh, all of the people who relentlessly defend Andrew Tate and the war room and all of these people, despite all of the evidence, I feel like Andrew Tate is having sex with all of those people, and he's whispering, "Andrew Tate, I am innocent. I'm a hero, free from the Matrix. Free yourself from the Matrix into their ears," which is why they become such uh, obedient people. I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe it works. The pimping starts. I remember him keeping all the money, not even me giving me one dollar. I'd keep 80% of the money they made. So they basically worked for free. They worked for my love and attention. I was giving 80% away. In total, uh, like $95,000. He kept being with me and controlling me. If I wasn't doing well, things would become more violent. The woman must learn that her man is fucking an iron mountain and the easiest path is to obey. Any other kind of resistance simply doesn't work. Drastic level of violence and submission that I never thought I would be like involved with. There was a night that I had gone over there and as soon as I walked in the door, he like pushed me to my knees and like smacked me really hard across the face. I'm trying to figure out where a thumb-shaped bruise on her neck came from. He would, like, bruise me, like, pretty bad. Okay, this guy is, um, Jonathan. Is is this the same guy? Um, somebody let me know, uh, Pax or anyone else who's following. So, um, do we know who this guy is? Jonathan, the money pilot? And, uh... Who is who is Joe Lampton? So we have the we we have some of the names. Joe Lampton is one of those guys whose um, whose actual name is uh, Vlad Obu, who is uh, currently under who is in a separate investigation for human trafficking. Who was even worse in Andrew Tate in treating his um, in treating the women, but who also learned from him. But yeah, it's, the, the 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 Matrix the Matrix is coming after these people. And Badly. Uh, kind of marking his territory. Most girls like marks like that as reminders and signs of ownership. This is how this is how these guys see you women. And that's why I teach in my course, yeah, getting the girl, fucking the girl is the first 10% of the game. Having a girl tattoo your name on her is the other 90%. He want me to get his name tattoo at all cost. He wanted me to tattoo. She loves being owned by me. I would have never been able to pull this off if it wasn't for Cobra Tate, Andrew Tate, and what he taught me in his pimping host degree course. Okay, so I'm just told uh, the Jonathan guy is a Delta pilot who currently is investigated by Delta after his doc after this documentary came. Oh, really? So this guy, Jonathan, who 
is on here talking to his war room about how he uh, beat one of the girls, one of his girls, and she loved and she loves it. She actually likes it. Um, he is a Delta pilot, and he's now under investigation by Delta after this documentary came came out. This is that's cool. He would like Thank bruise you. me like pretty badly, kind of marking his territory. Okay. And that's why I teach in my courses. Yeah, getting the girl, fucking the girl is the first ten percent of the game. Having a girl tattoo your name on her is the other ninety percent. He want me to get his name tattoo at all cost. He wanted me to tattoo his name on me. The reason I decided to webcam was because I, I liked this guy and I had developed a bit of trust for him. He bombshell me with love and all this cuteness and all this good. And then he was like expecting stuff from me that were like really, really huge. Somebody in the chat is simping for a lot. I don't know why. Uh, but I, I'm, gl I'm glad that you subscribed because you have to subscribe to make uh, comments here. Also, while you're here, maybe you could make a super chat in which you could type Allah. I would, I would appreciate that and I would read it out loud here. <laughs> We've now heard some first-hand accounts of what the war is really up to, and it appears that this whole thing is way bigger than just Tate. It's not just that these women were allegedly groomed into online sex work, it's that the method used to groom them, allegedly, is so strange and so specific that it's clearly something that's been taught to these members. And if you look at the chat room messages, there's one war member who is constantly instructing others on how to use this method and its details. Iggy and that's Semmelweis. the spiritual leader, Iggy Semmelweis. When I was initiated into the war, Iggy was there. He calls himself the master of spells and shadows and seems to play the role of the war spiritual leader. But he has stayed out of the public eye. The chat logs show us how integral it you know um lots of people like to um go after conspiracy theories and talk about um i don't know satanic uh <laughs> satanic organizations and cultish practices and the occult and this and that and the people don't uh, the many of the same people most of them are completely oblivious to what is happening right here in front of their faces where this big cult called the war room has an actual guy who refers to himself as the, the the grand wizard and who speaks of spells and magic and manipulating everyone and and we will see even more it's pretty messed up he even i think he even admits that that it is a cult he is to the operation of the war room He's the one always talking about missions and Pavlovian conditioning, which is the method you use to train dogs. He also talks about isolating women from their entire support network and emotionally manipulating them into getting tattoos of war room members' initials on their bodies and ultimately into sex work. He talks about casting spells and anchoring women's orgasms to the idea of money. I mean, this goes way beyond the video courses. I mean, no one knows what's really going on inside the war. But with all this talk of spells and mysticism, it's clearly a lot weirder than I thought. And the internal messages can only tell us so much. But speaking to someone on the inside is very difficult because they have this code of silence. However, we've recently managed to speak to someone who claims to have previously been the head of sales and marketing of the war. He's agreed to meet. Okay, this is very interesting, uh, a very interesting part. I just want to quickly look at this here. Um, so 
the guy we have just seen on screen, um, which is who is Jonathan, Jonathan Bow, who is the guy in the war room bragging about how he beat his girl into submission and left his mark. Update on Jonathan Bow, war room general accused in the documentary of assault. Delta has sent me a statement saying that they are taking these allegations very seriously and have placed Bow under uh, on administrative leave pending an investigation. Delta has zero tolerance for unlawful behavior. We are taking these allegations very seriously, having already placed the employee in question on administrative leave while an investigation is conducted. Delta has a long track record of taking meaningful actions in the fight against human trafficking, and this work will not end until human trafficking ceases to exist. Some good news. Now oh, we have some good news. One of those guys is under investigation, and I hope this is only the beginning, only the first step before the investigation reaches a legal level if it's not already there. Fantastic, great news. This this guy, Matt Shea, Matt Shea, you're a hero. Thank you. Hey, Matt. To me, Eli, you're coming all the way out of us. Eli spent two years as a member of the Warren, working I'll, closely I'll with Tate, to this but recently left after clashing with its leadership. So what first appealed to you about the Warren? I had never really consumed any manosphere, any like red pill stuff online. Other than Tate, really, he was the first person that I came across and I watched all of his videos. And I joined the war room in September 2020. I was one of those vulnerable men that fell to the marketing. And I helped propagate that with my sales and marketing efforts on his team, right? So how did you help propagate that? People who would sell the war room. We played into the insecurities of men, meaning that when you saw Tate with Abu Ghraib, for example, or you saw Tate as a four-time kickboxing world champion, he made you believe that that was the ideal that you needed to become in order to get women in your life. When you talk about women, are you talking about just sleeping with women or no, establishing no, no. a relationship? Abs with absolutely not. The war room is all about you getting women that serve you in your life, that benefit. What do you mean serve you? So the war room has a methodology called the PhD, the Pimping Host Degree. Although it was removed from our website, and although it's no, not no longer officially called that, which is find a woman that's attracted to you and you know, obviously sleep with her. And eventually you put her through a sort of Pavlovian conditioning where for her to get your attention, she has to complete tasks, then bigger tasks, then bigger tasks. And eventually her whole world becomes you and she has nothing else except you. And she completely serves you little, completely. Quote unquote, you could call it a, a slave. She has to do more things for you, whether it's, you know, wash the dishes, do errands for you, or eventually do OnlyFans webcam, which was encouraged inside of the war room. A lot of people might say that to teach men to coerce and manipulate women, to use Pavlovian conditioning, like you said, into working in the sex trade is immoral and wrong. I would never do it personally. I've never done it personally. But that was a big part of what the war room did. It was. Do you regret that you played a part in it? I don't regret it. Why would I feel guilty of something that I had no control over? Well, you were part of the marketing team, right? Yeah, absolutely. But during that time, I was brainwashed. All of your friends are inside the war room. All of your connections are inside the war room. <sighs> uh, okay, I, <laughs> this is weird. I don't know what to think about this. He, he doesn't feel guilty about it because he didn't participate. He didn't necessarily do anything and he did not, he wasn't in control because he was brainwashed. All of your knowledge you consume every day is inside of the war room and they actively encourage you to cut off the surroundings in your real life. And you start cutting off friends, you cut off, you know, old coworkers and- Do all they encourage that? They encourage you. And actually, let me tell you a very scary thing. The one of the members inside the war room, Iggy, Xi Yonghui, it goes under a few different names, tells you that your new brothers inside of the war room are your new life. Everyone else before that, it doesn't matter. We have here the truth of life. And if you want to follow us, you have to, quote unquote, 
kill your parents symbolically because they may not agree with the things that you're learning here, but it will impede you from moving forward inside of our organization if you do not kill your parents. And I thought that was a very scary thing. But at the moment, I actually believe it, believe it or not. I am so brainwashed. The war room and the events, they literally describe that this is how you feel if you are in a cult. This is how you feel when you are when you follow, uh, I don't know, a similar organization and, and you and you think of, of others <laughs> this way. You don't and you don't realize that you are being subjected to brainwashing. They all said, what's up with not admitting to his mistakes? I know. Um, I mean, at least you could expect a um, I'm sorry that I contributed to this. I'm sorry that I helped it grow. At least you could expect something like that. But saying that he doesn't feel sorry at all, that's kind of, I don't know, unusual. As a cult, he basically said, let's not kid ourselves. This is a cult. Who's in charge? Iggy, the war. Okay, Iggy Samurais. Here's what In the events, they literally describe it as a cult. Iggy, he basically said, let's not kid ourselves. This is a cult. Who's in charge? Of the war. Iggy is at the top, yeah. But he definitely, when you spoke to him, he definitely had an agenda. He definitely influenced you in ways that were not of your own thinking. How do you mean? He literally would tell me that I went inside of your brain and I rearranged things. I went in the attic and I started moving the furniture around. That's how he would describe it. So he was very good at reprogramming brains. And what's his agenda? I couldn't really tell you exactly how, what the agenda would be other than, um, Again, take over the world, I guess. It's very, very grand aspirations. So according to Eli, the war... Okay, um, uh, th th this is the, this is where it gets, starts getting creepy. So Iggy Samuelweiss is behind a lot of the stuff that happens in the, in the war room. While the public faces Andrew Tate, Iggy is there in the background uh, instructing people in the war room all the time telling them what to do, giving them all of these ideas on how to manipulate people, speaking of spells and black magic, and and telling this guy that he goes into his brain, into his mind to rearrange things and makes him act in ways that he himself was not aware of. Now, you could, if you believe that in such things, you could say that there is something something more to this, something supernatural to this, something magical to this, something evil to this. Or you could think that this is, that the guy is just a master of manipulation and that the war room attracts a lot of people who simply feel insecure and who are very, um, are very weak toward being becoming manipulated by these guys who take them out of their miserable lives and turn them into something. But no matter how you want to see it, it's just it's 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 really messed up. And whether this supernatural lord is just about manipulation, it, it is just all very twisted, right? And you and you wonder what the purpose is. What is the what is the what is the entire purpose of this? Is, is it is it just power? Is it, is it wealth? Is it influence? Or is there something more to this? Is a cult that, while not all members will act on this, teaches men to groom women and is run by a mysterious man named Iggy Semmelweis. This is the war room of Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate is the secret weapon Iggy uses to. This is a prom promotional. Video. Andrew Tate. And analyze this is the war room of Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate is the secret weapon Iggy uses to market that cult. It works like this. Tate has millions of followers on Twitter and other social media platforms. He uses that following to market his app, The Real World. 200,000 of these followers filter into the app, where they are then sold courses, pushing them to the war room. This final tier consists of hundreds of Tate's most ardent followers. But once they're in, they find not just Tate, but Iggy Semmelweis lying in wait. So who is he? Welcome, my brothers, to the Iron Shadows. <laughs> um, that's how they used to depict villains in... <laughs> in old movies where they would depict villains in quite unrealistic ways. But so, and, and this guy is now acting like one of those unrealistic characters and thereby actually 
making those depictions realistic. You see, it's all weird. <laughs> It turns out his real name is Miles Sonkin. He was born in Chicago in 1961. His mother was a TV psychic, and he appeared in high school theater productions. I guess it's not that fancy, right? If, you, if your name is just Miles Sonkin, of course. He later studied hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming, a method outlined in books like Frogs into Princes and The Structure of Magic, based on the unverified belief that you can influence the way a person will act using only your choice of words and tone of speech. Iggy Semmelweis is not his first alias. In the 90s, he lived in Japan as Douglas Hall, the self-proclaimed greatest pickup artist in the world. He sold courses teaching Western men to seduce Japanese women. He appears to have met Tate around 2018. Soon after, Tate starts selling his own courses, and in 2019, the War Room is established. In the War Room's chat logs from 2019, Iggy greets every new member. He sends them a document called the Survival Scrolls, which appears to be a manifesto outlining the Warham's agenda. Please read the following books in the exact order they are listed. They build up. Okay, I, I didn't even see these, this part here. And wow. So the guy uh, lives on a different alias uh, in Japan as a the best pickup artist. Then he meets Andrew Tate. And shortly after, Andrew Tate starts the War Room where they start building an empire and uh, and he basically teaches people how how to manipulate humans through words and and here is the issue like you might you might say it's pretty cringe it's pretty ridiculous you might say all of those things and yes i, I want to call it ridiculous i want to call it cringe i want to call that guy a complete dork but let's not uh, forget the fact that it actually works. <laughs> let's not forget that lots of people are actually manipulated by these guys. Let's not forget that this guy seems to be teaching Andrew Tate to manipulate and groom the world. <laughs> Upon each other, the predatory female how to dump your wife. Pimpology, the 48 laws of the game. They train you in setting up the female sexual slavery frames. G's are men of purpose, men of will, and men of power that the war room builds. All women are merely dragons chasing them. G's understand this reality and use their power of purpose to bend the dragons to their will and get the dragons giving over their hordes of treasure while never letting the dragons catch them. It's not just about sexual exploitation. This is about financially exploiting women. It's about turning them into slaves that you can profit from. And not just through webcam, through a number of means, it seems. You seek out. This is so, this is so ridiculous. Uh, you, <laughs> somebody who is such a fan of such, uh, of such stories could be some nerd who really loves that stuff. Or it could be someone who actually starts a cult and really manipulates people, right? You really know, you really never know uh, what's actually happening. Women with their own businesses seek out women with family money. Seek out women who are willing to give you their paycheck to use as you see fit. See, the crazy thing is, you could be a woman right now who thinks you're in a relationship with a man but that man is actually a member of the war room and he is using a guide to manipulate you into giving him money. Armed with his real name, we've managed to speak to a family connection of Iggy. So Miles was really smart. He never went to high school. Um, he did shit as much as like, he could, but he was really smart in it. In the 80s, Miles was involved in uh, like a cult or two. One was uh, Marichi. The Maharishi's leader believed he was directly spoken to by the gods, and former members have since claimed it was a cult. And the other was the Bhagwan. The Bhagwan, also known as Rajneesh, was another Indian-based meditation cult featured in the Netflix series Wild Wild Country. Osho? What? Wait, <laughs> wait, was he part of this? And 
the other was the Bhagwan. The Basque's leader believed he was directly spoken to by the gods, and former members have since claimed it was a cult. And the other was the Bhagwan. The Bhagwan, also known as Rajneesh, was another Indian-based meditation cult featured in the Netflix series Wild Wild Country. Oh, sure. Its leader faced numerous criminal allegations, oh, including sure. the sexual abuse of his followers. Miles is very paranoid and he thinks that... Why is I not saying his name? This guy is Osho. His name is... <laughs> He's... Oh, uh, my. Okay, I want to... <laughs> There's something, some... This guy is some. This guy is is pretty messed up, right? He's he is a he was a cult leader, and he did some really terrible things. He set up a compound where the members were basically brainwashed, and were then sexually used. Um, and a, a cult which was arming itself, which would, which would have probably gone to some really really bad. Um, ends. I don't know. Lots of lots of cults end up doing really weird stuff, but this just reminds me of a video <laughs> that I know of Osho uh, that I just want to quickly bring up here because I find it so funny. <laughs> um, because democracy basically means. Government by the people of the people. He's so slow. For the people. He has to pause to influence you. But the people are retarded. <laughs> so let us say government by the retarded. <laughs> Uh, for the retarded, <laughs> of the retarded. <laughs> uh, I just keep thinking about this video when I see this guy. <laughs> um, anyway, this is that guy, Osho. <laughs> I know the video is funny, right? No matter how <laughs> how terrible the guy is, uh, but yeah, was, why is he why is he even doing that last pause? That's that's way too long. Including the sexual abuse of his followers. Miles is very paranoid, and he thinks that some bad people are after him, as well as the you know the government, like FBI. And he said, uh, "If I disappear, I was murdered." Like he's on edge, hiding from someone. So Iggy was in two alleged cults in the 80s and is now using the image of Andrew Tate to create a cult of his own. Everything we find out about this man is so surreal. And it gets even weirder. Iggy frequently mentions a fantasy novel called The Scarlet Citadel, in which an evil wizard who looks strangely similar to him wears a ring featuring a snake's head of the same kind worn by the senior members of the Warren including the ones who recruited Amanda and Maria. The wizard trades in girl slaves and is the real power behind the throne of the Cobra King in Koth. So while the authorities in the world's media are looking at the Tate brothers in Romania, this wizard man who appears to have created the cult of Andrew Tate and instructed its members how to groom women is walking free. It doesn't even deliver how creepy this actually is, but uh, he frequently cites a book, Citadel, which in which there's a wizard who looks just like evil him. wizard who looks strangely similar to him, wears a ring, feet wears a ring, wearing a snake's head of the same head. kind worn by the senior members of the Warren, including the ones who recruited Amanda and Maria. The wizard trades in girl slaves and is the real power behind the. Th Trades in girl slaves and is the real power. Throne of the Cobra King in Koth. Behind the throne of the Cobra King. Isn't all of this really messed up? Cobra Tate. With his 
cobra symbol on his war room. So while the authorities in the world's media are looking at the Tate brothers in Romania, this wizard man who appears to have created the cult of Andrew Tate and instructed its members how to groom women is walking free. There's only one thing left to do, find Iggy. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Trivial coincidence at average fantasy fan, yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, who mentioned destiny? Why did you mention destiny? Is it just destiny because the word destiny was dropped? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So we've just found an audio file in the chat logs that appears to have Iggy addressing a war room event. So we're going to give it a listen. We're finding ways of making money. Put that money together, get it rolling. Cash, cash, more cash, more cash. Take more money. Take all their energy. And cash is energy because it's currency. It's flowing. It keeps flowing. It keeps Three. flowing behind scenes i know men in the war room that are doing amazing things that are becoming amazing men truly amazing men and you wouldn't even know it from reading the papers or watching the news but it gives me incredible energy and it gives me incredible hope when i have a chance to meet up with you guys and see you every morning and afternoon and evening in the war room Whenever I need that energy, I just it's just a jolt. Let's go into the war room and, and drink energy, pure nectar, pure power. It's all great. It's all great. And we've only just begun. We've only just seems begun. Like Iggy okay. <laughs> now, the first thing I notice is the way he talks and repeats certain things. Take all their energy. Cash is energy because it's currency. It's flowing. It keeps, keeps flowing. flowing. Keeps Three. flowing. Behind scenes. I know men in the war room. Okay. Um, I know here. <laughs> Masculine Mindset says demonic. National Jones says don't drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, sounds like Fight Club for Pussies says Foresight. <laughs> this guy sucks, my gosh, says Matthew F. Diana says, Diana says, this man is so spiritually cringe. Pepe Alasquid says, really gay. Look, you say all of these things. And, you know, that's what I think to my initial reaction is, what in the world? And why does this guy speak like that? But, but then again... I have to stop myself and go back to thinking. We are here sitting and thinking, <laughs> so ridiculous, cringe, what in the world? But this guy is actually there using the way he speaks, using his words, as he says, and his magic to to go and, um, and manipulate people and create a cult where he brainwashes people by their admission and by his admission, uh, admission. Apparently he manipulates and hypnotizes people. Again, some some might say this is witchcraft, as, as somebody uh, earlier said. Others might say this is just, this is manipulation, a very masterful form of manipulation. I would go for, for that one, but it works. It's not just a laughing matter. And the guy is creating a, a messed up cult with this. And the, the thing is that this documentary just makes it, uh, like it, 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 it reveals how twisted everything actually is. I mean, before this, I thought this is all just some, an organization by Andrew Tate, uh, just to build wealth and act like a complete asshole. But then, then there is this guy who is the mastermind behind it and who is leading a cult. That are doing amazing things that are becoming amazing men truly amazing men and you wouldn't 
even know it from reading the papers or watching the news. But it gives me incredible energy and it gives me incredible hope when I have a chance to meet up with you guys and see you every morning and afternoon and evening in the war room. Whenever I need that energy, I just it's just a jolt. Let's go into the war room and, and drink energy pure. If you are a Muslim and you see this, and you think Andrew Tate is a Muslim figure and you are proud of that, I don't know, maybe you should sit down and... Uh, and wonder if you really want to believe that he is your next Muslim superhero when he is obviously under the uh, influence of some guy who is who who, who, who who prides himself as this occult leader manipulator. I don't know. Nectar, pure power. It's all great. It's all great. And we've only just begun. It seems like Iggy is in this for something bigger than money or fame. Iggy clearly has a plan for his war members, a plan that involves using them to execute his vision of the world in which women are subjugated into sex slaves and financially abused. But there's one group who are trying to thwart this vision. The Gamma Secret. The entire war room flows like a river, and it's always the secret kings who insist on throwing big rocks into the river. Kings. The Gamma Secret Kings are a group of men who became disenchanted with the online world of masculinity influencers and now devote their time to exposing what they see as scammers, grifters, and false prophets exploiting male insecurity for their own ends. So we've managed to get in touch with a man called E. Scorpio. He's one of the Gamma Secret Kings, and we're going to give him a call. Hello? Hey. Hello, Mr. Shane. All right. So what is your take on the grand scheme of Iggy, then? Iggy is not, he's not an appealing man at all, in my opinion. Whereas Tate, you have Tate, who is a, is a, is a you know, a, a, uh, a man who is at the peak of his physical prowess. He's a, he's a you know, uh, an attractive looking man. So why not have that as your, as your, your, your honey to lure in these, these men that are, want to have, that want to be that image themselves. They don't want to be like Iggy. They want to be like Tate. So would you say that Iggy's goals are ultimately ideological? I would say yes. I, I believe there is a, a sense of desiring to, to sow some kind of political chaos with the war room that they're these uh, generals in the culture war. They're very angry. They're very, uh, they are frustrated with society and they are very receptive to this idea of you can own women. Are these men true believers in the political sense? I, I would say yes. As if this investigation wasn't strange enough already, we're now on our way to Koreatown, LA to stake out the apartment of a self-proclaimed wizard who's building a cult of a- Maria Lee Vega said, why so much emphasis on women as slaves? Why does everything boil down to that? Uh, because that's, I guess, um, men who want to appear strong, they think the easiest thing they can do is to, is to appeal to their most primitive urges and act like primitive animals, like savages, and, you know, exploit women that they are supposed to have sex with naturally and turn them into slaves because they think, we are men, ooh, ooh, ooh. we are men, I am men. I want to have sex with women. I want to have sex with women, but I can't get all women, so, if I then, as that primitive being, turn women into my slaves to obey me and to do whatever I say, then I am the king of my most primitive urges. I make those women obey me. I do what everyone wants to do primitively. And I am now, I am the boss. I am boss. I am monster boss. I am boss gorilla. Look, 
all of those women, I, they want to have sex with me. I want to have sex with them, and now they all obey me. I'm strong. That's basically what it is. I don't know how else to put it, but that's really how... <laughs> Just abusive and manipulative right-wing warriors who are somehow meant to take over the world. Okay, this is Iggy's. Please clip it. <laughs> road right now. Okay, it doesn't look like any of the houses here are expensive. For the kind of grand master priest of the war, I mean, you'd expect it to be a little fancier. That's it there. Where? Yeah, Up there on the right. right. Those people just came out there. Kind of nervous because, you know, what if we actually do find him? <laughs> what is his reaction going to be? Will he cast a spell on us? <laughs> is this good? <laughs> <laughs> He's saying that and he is joking about it, but... <laughs> People are actually manipulated by this guy, you know. <laughs> but it is interesting to me, and I will come to that in a, in a, in a minute, but <laughs> it is interesting to me that he lives in some average neighborhood in California. Oh, yeah. trying to check if the apartment number we have for Iggy is correct. Our producer Tash is going to go there because he recognizes what I look like. You say there is no average neighborhood in California. Well, there is an average neighborhood by California standards, right? What is this Korea town? Pretty sure that's a uh... I don't, I don't know that much about California, but I think that's a, that, that's, that's a not fancy place to live, right? He's definitely because I went on to the um, address book on the door. Miles Sonkin, apartment. Oh, nice, okay. I think we wait for a bit. Despite being central to the war, writing its reading list, and helping create its methods for grooming women, Iggy has managed to dodge accountability by remaining in the shadows. But now, for the first time, the master of spells and shadows will at least have to face questions about his role in all of this. Oh, fuck, there he is, there he is, he's right there. I just saw him come out. Okay, put your camera down, put your camera down. He's, he's walking away, he's walking away. Yeah, we need to go park at the end of the road. Matt, let's go. Hi, Iggy Semmelweis. Are you training people in the war room how to enslave women? Do you run the war room? We've seen chat room evidence that you're training men how to enslave women. Do you care to comment on that? It looks like from the evidence that we've seen that you're instructing men how to enslave and manipulate women and coerce them into webcam. You have no comment on that at all? How long are we going to walk for before you answer me? We thought Iggy would go back inside, jump in a car, or go somewhere where we couldn't follow him. But he appears intent on walking the entire breadth of Koreatown. You have nothing to say to these allegations? Iggy, we've spoken to several women who allege that members of the war... Are um <laughs> uh somebody said he's scared the, the thing is i don't know i guess every every human is different and how they would react to such a situation but to be very honest i feel like the way he is acting it looks like he is in control of what he is doing and he's acting completely unfazed completely ignoring what's happening just walking straight without giving any reaction nothing at all obviously looks like looks like somebody who's working or who worked on on his reactions right who takes the the the, the magic stuff seriously that he teaches and believes in 
I don't know. It, it still it still tr strikes me as weird that the guy who is supposedly the the mastermind behind this cult that makes so much money. I mean, we see the wealth that Andrew Tate throws around. Lives in this weird, lives in this regular average place instead of having a huge mansion, which makes me think. Um, which which makes it even weirder to me, even more creepy to me. There's some there's a creepy aspect to this. It that makes it look like it is not about wealth and comfort and money to this guy. It's about something different to him. You know, something worse. I don't know. Abused them, coerced them, were physically violent to them. As the grand high priest of the war room, don't you have anything to say about that? Oh, he even wears a war room thing on his back. Look at that. As that's that's the war room symbol, right? The the chess piece. The grand high priest of the war room. Don't you have anything to say about that? You don't teach men how to get women to fall in love with them, sleep with them, and then coerce them into webcam. You've used the exact phrase female sexual slavery. What does that mean? What is it that you saw in Andrew that made you think he was the perfect person to front this whole operation? Are you not worried about these allegations? You have nothing to say? You don't want to defend yourself against these allegations at all? Well, it looks like Iggy Samawise, a.k.a. Miles Sonkin, doesn't want to talk to us at all. And he can't go in there. Hi. Hi. Uh, this guy says y'all are bothering him. We're journalists from the BBC. We're actually investigating this man for running a uh, what mean? appears to be an organization that uh, teaches men how to coerce women. Yeah, for real. No, I, I got that vibe. He comes here a lot. Does he come here a lot? Yeah, and you got the vibe. Is he always bringing different women? Yeah, I thought he was a pimp. You thought he was a pimp? Yeah, but he did tell me to tell you guys to stop the ass ago. Okay. I gotta go back in. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i find it i find it uh i find it nice that this guy actually says oh i always had that i always got that vibe from him he he's he's a pimp i, th I thought he's a pimp but isn't it a bit problematic for this guy to say this on camera here i don't know <laughs> i hope it's not hi hi uh, this guy says y'all are bothering him. We're journalists from the BBC. We're actually investigating this man for running a uh, what mean? appears to be an organization that uh, teaches men how to coerce women. Yeah, for real. No, I, I got that vibe. <laughs> he comes here a lot. Does he come here a lot? Yeah, and you got the vibe. Is he always bringing different women? Yeah, I thought he was a pimp. You thought he was a pimp? Yeah, but he did tell me to tell you guys to stop the ass Okay. I gotta go back in there and... You know, yeah, yourself. of course. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, yeah. Have a good one. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I, I don't know. I guess it's. I guess the guy is uh, interesting enough to just to, to just say that to them. He's. Um, I don't know. Should you be doing that? Should you be uh, knowing that you are probably that you are on camera? Should you be saying, "Oh, I always got that vibe. He's creepy and he's a pimp." I always thought he's a pimp. I don't know. <laughs> uh, High Commander said, obviously scripted. I'm not sure if you're trolling here, but um, you're talking about some guy who works at a store that we can see here. Do you think they hired that guy and scripted this? Again, with the, taking, ignoring all of the risks associated with, with this, that people would actually go to the store? And ask if this guy works for them or not, and and and, and everything there is. Just, don't be ridiculous. I know, I know. The earth is, is the earth is flat. I know. We've we've given a chance to Iggy it's to respond smart. to the very serious allegations that people are making to him, including those of multiple women who accuse him of running an organization that trained men how to coerce them, manipulate them, and some of these men they say also physically abuse them. We've given him a chance to respond. He has nothing to say. 
Oh, he looked. He finally looked. Ah, I think. There he is. Matt, I think Iggy just tweeted about you. About me? <laughs> Matt A. Shea and his cameraman show up uninvited at my home, follow me for half an hour as I walk, ask me silly questions, but never offer me a box of chocolates, so I say nothing. Now Matt will never know who the real mastermind of the warum is. Matt fucked up again. I mean, it's pretty obvious it's you. <laughs> Who's the real mastermind of the warum? You could say what a bunch of weirdos, but <sighs> Maria Lee said, How is this scripted? Why would Iggy be in a script like this? Don't bother it. Don't bother. They won't get it. <laughs> Every single time someone buys a DNG t-shirt, Matt Shea gets an email to his personal email address, letting him know that a DNG shirt has been purchased and someone is walking around in the world with a picture of him being homeless on a t-shirt. By now, the Warham is clearly aware of our film and they ramp up attempts to discredit us before its release. He's obviously working on some new film piece and he thinks, oh, finally, I'm going to get Andrew Tate back with my new hit piece full of lies. But when he releases it, Everyone's just going to call him a DNG and ask him for chocolates. These people are worse than disingenuous. They are worse than simply liars. They are evil. Okay, he's dead. Is there he, he dead? Is there. He's on the desk. There he is. Look at these dorks. We're back with breaking news out of Romania, where disgraced influencer Andrew Tate has been indicted. The charges include rape, human trafficking, and forming an organized crime group. On June 20th, the Romanian authorities announced that Andrew and Tristan Tate are to be formally charged and are due to appear in court. If the judges decide to keep them in jail until trial, this may be our last chance to ask them anything. So I'm back in Bucharest. Again. I know, right? Who does that? Like uh, trying to bully some guy who is there to seriously investigate things and then doing doing this. Look, there he is with, with, with the spray. I mean, I remember people acting like that in high school. That's where my mind always goes. Andrew. I see that you are officially indicted. Okay. One police. Okay. okay, we just want to ask oh, some questions to Andrew. No. No. We've seen internal no. chat logs from your the Warham's this? Telegram group no. that demonstrate that the Warham... What's that? Do you have my chocolate? Do you have my chocolate? Uh, I'm asking you about the internal chat logs that demonstrate that the yes, Warham is actually a society place. that no, trains no, men how to groom no, women. No. Chocolate? I, you must realize how silly that question sounds alongside my question, which is about human trafficking. Okay. 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 Part of me thinks uh, Matt Shea has balls here because um, I don't know. Um, I think the I think this bodyguard could push them and probably break their equipment and get away with it, and not much would happen. And I don't know if worse things could happen there. That's that's nothing. Even since Tate has faced allegations of human trafficking. Iggy and the War Room have been using his image to market themselves to young men and boys all across the world. Throughout Tate's house arrest, fans have shown up to visit him. Guys, you're not going to believe where I'm at right now. I'm outside Andrew Tate's house. What do you think about when Andrew says that all these attacks and accusations against him are part of a matrix attack? It's 100% true, man. If Hypothetically, there was evidence presented that led to a conviction for some of these crimes. Would that all still be yeah. a matrix attack? Of course. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say someone had video evidence. Average Andrew Tate fan. Of him, him committing these crimes. Would that also be part of the Matrix attack? Depends. Depends if it was staged. Depends if it was real. No one would know. No one would know. No one would know. What threshold of evidence would you accept that he that, has committed these crimes? That Andrew Tate said that he was guilty himself. Anything besides that, I, I would question it. Wow. So th that, that's an incredible amount of power for one person to have over your mind, right? Every single one of us, to some degree, is an empty vessel. We're all programmed. Uh, average Andrew Tate fan, yeah. Average Andrew Tate fan here. Average Andrew Tate fan. What, I mean, how can you argue with this mindset? <laughs> Seriously, how can you argue with this mindset? I, I'm, I think this guy, he is on Twitter, the ginger guy that we have just seen. Um, can somebody send me a, send me a link to that guy? I think he recently, he posted about this. After people said, that guy was fake, he was hired. The, the guy actually appeared on social media. So um, it's ridiculous. I'm just joking when I say average Andrew Tate fan, but I'm also not joking. There's no such thing as escaping the slave mind. You must just to some degree understand who is programming you and understand if you really want those characteristics. Goodness. Have you heard of Andrew Tate's war room? Yes. Yeah, I have. It, would you consider joining? 100%, yeah. A recent survey suggests that 52% of males between the ages of 16 and 17 in the UK have a... I didn't say ginger. I never said ginger. You heard, you heard me wrong. I said gender. Positive view of Andrew Tate, with only 19% having a negative... That makes no sense. This will be a video. Proof AP is lying. Of you. And we're more likely to have heard of him than the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. This hasn't happened by accident. The strategy is basically to show an aspirational lifestyle and to market that. You see this guy that in your head can get the best girls, then you think, okay, let's follow and let's listen to what he has to say. Just How many have, people are working on this? I'd say a few dozens. We have a PR campaign team. We go and we see all medias, either positive or negative, that mentions Tate. We will send people, again, very real looking Twitter, Instagram, whatever, social media accounts, and they go and they comment on your posts, on your posts. They go and they call you DNG. They go and they, they try to counter your narrative. Okay, here is the funny thing. Uh, I recently got access to, um, to leaked files. Um, somebody shared them with me. Um, a like two terabyte storage of war room members in charge of the war room who shared, who, who, who saved all kinds of stuff from and, uh, from and about Andrew Tate and the war room. Uh, and I, I have access to those files. I've seen the kind of stuff that they save. And it's like, you can see there that, um, that they have, they basically go through the internet and pick and download and save every single thing that mentions Andrew Tate and the war room and title it and put it in folders. The, the guy actually has a, <laughs> he has a team of people who go through the whole internet and just search for everything that mentions Andrew Tate to then engage with it to, I don't know, sent trolls to make a response to it to whatever it is everything that is that is uh, positive about him everything that is negative about him but it's like it's a huge huge amount of a huge collection of stuff that they down much of it just probably for no purpose other than simply having saved whatever there is about andrew tate it's pretty weird so are they real people or bots or they're, they're partly partly real people partly bots very very highly trained we have shifted our marketing in previous years past years to obviously as you've seen you keep one element the same which was his aspirational lifestyle cars the, the money you know the fighting remove the woman replace it with 
uh, Islam, by the way. He's not a true Muslim. Whoa, there it is. Place it with uh, Islam, by the way. He's not a true Muslim. <laughs> oh. Replace it with uh, positivity. Replace it with perhaps a picture of him and his brother's daughter and stuff like that with charity work that he's doing now to slowly but surely shift the narrative away from his previous image into something new. After Tate's arrest, his marketing team have done everything they can to present him as a religious family man. But they can't erase what he's done with the war, nor his life as a self-confessed webcam pimp. I have a unique resume. World champion kickboxer, pimp, mafia associated criminal. Like I've got all this stuff and it was like, who is this dude? Like, sure. And this is what they did. Um, so after the arrest, they started shifting the whole thing entirely. The whole public image of him S started uh, denying everything he said and did in the past and depicting him as a as a hero who just wants traditional values and who wants to move away from, you know, the corrupt stuff. But somehow he still says things like that, uh, that a man should go and have sex with as many women as possible. And that, that women are basically there to obey uh, men because that's in alignment with with Islam anyway. So no contradiction there. Uh, but uh, his, his conversion to Islam came in October 2022 when, when I think... Um, as far as I remember, I think I'm pretty sure about that. They were they were aware they were aware that there was an investigation against them, and that an arrest was coming soon. And of course, what it looks like is they were informed about the, the arrest, the upcoming arrest, and the controversy it will bring. So they decided to 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 switch to shift images, to change things up to become a Muslim and to now depict himself as a Muslim victim who just wants proper values. And there is some solid evidence that he also got, got, got some benefits, whether it is money or other things for converting to Islam and propagating Islam. Remember, his brother Tristan Tate is on record saying that he was offered to convert to Islam in return for benefits, but that he did not do it. But hey, his brother converted. What does that mean? Surely it can't all be true. Well, it's all true. Mr. Tate, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. How you doing? Yeah, good. Here for the filming. In 2016, before Iggy met Tate, long before the war room and with his kickboxing career coming to an end, Tate was building his webcam business in the UK. To try to remain in the public eye, he was cultivating an image as a pimp online. Oh, a big banner saying, any women who think Andrew's amazing, want a free life and just come along for the ride, inbox him now, but they gotta be hot. Make it, make it something just like, fit bitches apply here, put the email address, edit it up. Don't just make bitch, this bitches apply here. Yeah, but in a more, you know, likable way. Be beautiful young ladies apply here or something. And, and and we need like a montage of like the Aston, you do like some slow shots on the outside and fucking let everyone know how much it costs and I'd look cool and you'll put some gangster music over it or some shit. It's not just gonna be just it's gotta be something good. Even back his accent changed quite a bit over the last years, I guess, right? Back then, he was thinking about how to achieve his dream of viral fame. This led him to appear on the reality show Big Brother. I don't care if nobody down there likes me. Everyone's already pre-decided they don't like me, and that's fine. So I know I'm the most intelligent person in this house, and I'm the most capable person in this house. <laughs> Fact. Tate was kicked out after six days when the production company was made aware of an investigation into him for the alleged rape of two women and physical abuse of another. Four years later, the Crown Prosecution Service chose not to charge him. I won't say that he's a complete imbecile, but he's definitely not very intelligent. I can say I can say about uh, people who that I have big disagreements with that they are intelligent, and I've said it before. Like I would say, um, Daniel Kikichu, who <laughs> who likes me a lot, I would say he's quite an intelligent guy, although his strict adherence to traditional 
fundamental Islamic values makes him very stupid, which is why he so often is trapped in very in very stupid ways of thinking. I would say Muhammad Hijab, for example, is an intelligent guy, although he suffers from similar conditions. But this guy is not intelligent. He's not very intelligent. But and he thinks he's the most intelligent person in the in the room here. Maybe in an empty room. I don't know. Because they felt a conviction was unlikely. Due to events in the outside world, Andrew has had to leave the Big Brother house. Tate's decision to go on one of the biggest reality TV shows in the country while under police investigation was an early indication that he would let nothing stand in the way of his insatiable desire for fame. And that he not only felt impervious to allegations of rape, but could in fact incorporate misogyny into his brand. All of which made him the ideal frontman for Iggy's cult of financially and sexually abusing women. Today, the three women involved in the allegations that led to Tate being ejected from Big Brother are now meeting with the UK authorities in an attempt to reopen the police's case against him. I think all the girls here in the UK deserve justice, and it needs to send out a message that you can't get away with this. Whereas right now, I believe it's sending the opposite, that you can get away with doing anything you want to a woman, and there's no repercussions. His fans can say what they want. They've never met him. They don't know the truth. They've never been behind closed doors like that. They don't know what monster he is and what us girls do. And they're still, I'm going to say, hundreds of women that have experienced awful things from the hands of that man. Hopefully, they'll be justice. These women were the first alleged victims of Tate, whose method of coercive control was then packaged and sold around the world. If you've bought this course, which you obviously have, congratulations, you're going to change your life for the better. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm fucking certified. <sighs> I want to get to an update. This is just, this is the real matrix. Like those idiots say, it's the matrix. Break free from the matrix. This is the real matrix. I mean, if you are a part of, of, of Andrew Tate's fan base, then you are part of the, of the actual matrix and you are a victim of it brainwashed because he whispered into your ear Andrew Tate money while he was having sex with you that's the method they teach date on a story that we have been following closely here as social media personality Andrew Tate has been charged in Romania with rape human trafficking and forming a criminal gang to exploit women it's now up to the Romanian courts to decide if and when this trial will take place. On the 21st of June, Tate was formally charged with human trafficking and rape. But we still have questions about the warum, and having to attend court means Tate won't be able to hide behind his gates. Is the warum an international grooming cult, Andrew? Because I've spoken to three women now who say that it is. <laughs> I've spoken chocolates? to three women. Chocolates? That's a, I've spoken to three women who say that they've been trained by senior members of the war room to groom them and abuse them. So is so is the war room an international grooming cult of some kind? Tate has managed to appeal to millions of young men by exploiting their insecurities. Once in his orbit, these same young men are encouraged to buy more and more courses where their final destination is a cult that teaches men how to turn women into slaves. What we've discovered is, Iggy took Tate's misogynistic persona and used it to create a global network with scores of potential victims. Tate's fame is being used to sell a method of abuse to men around the world, but with his fans now numbering in the tens of millions, how many of them will this message appeal to? <laughs> it's 
The documentary represents another brazen attempt to present one-sided, unverified allegation against Andrew Tate. The claims put forward not only present false accusations, but insult the massive community that considers Andrew Tate a life-changing positive force, said a representative for Andrew and Tristan Tate. The War Room promotes self-discipline, motivation, and confidence building whilst giving members access to thousands of professionals from around the world who encourage personal responsibility and accountability, emphasizing the importance of taking ownership of your choices and actions. Clearly, that's what they're doing, right, as we have seen. The suggestion that Andrew Tate's conversion to Islam was motivated by a desire of increasing popularity or business interests is not only unfounded, but an insult to his personal beliefs and choices. Oh, Andrew categorically denies any involvement in criminal activities such as rape or physical abuse. Yeah. I slap and beat women and make them obey me and do whatever I say. But hey, I deny all kinds of abuse. Categorically. No official legal action has been taken in the UK with regard to allegations of rape or sexual assault against Andrew Tate. Andrew is prepared to take all necessary legal actions to defend his innocence and hold accountable those responsible for defamatory claims. Yeah. All right. Um, man, man, man. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Very creepy. Very creepy. Very creepy. Yeah, so they were they were aware of the investigations. They were aware that something big is coming, some arrest is coming. Andrew Tate converted to Islam before it came out, then made it look like they only arrested him after he became a Muslim, which is how he started playing the victim which he planned beforehand of course by the way much respect to match a wonderful very well done thank you so much i hope this will this will make it all much harder for andrew tate and his people um we see how that iggy Semmelweis is behind a lot of the stuff that goes on I, I still find it creepy. Okay, I still really find it find it kind of messed up. I don't know if it's just me, but the guy is so involved. He is so much respected. He's like a master behind the, the war room. We see how he's instructing all of the guys, how he's speaking of uh, basically controlling them. Andrew Tate is letting him have all the, the, the floor in terms of teaching the guys. But then they accumulate wealth, Andrew Tate accumulates wealth, and he lives in a very fancy place. And Iggy Semmelweis just lives in a random apartment in California. And <laughs> I don't know if, if, that, if it's just me, but that just makes me think, you know, if, if they are all just scumbags and they are all doing this for their personal gain, for wealth, for, to live fancy, to have, you know, women and, and, and big homes and cars and, and pools and whatever, whatever it is. Uh, that's one thing, right? They would just be big scumbags. And, and we could point at them and think, you know, look at these selfish scumbags who are exploiting the world. But then, but when you have a, a guy like this, who is behind all of this, but who lives in a in some random apartment that makes me think that is creepier that is more sinister there is more to this to him it's not about money to him it's not about the it's not about living a fancy life to him it's about it's about power it's about maybe something political maybe something worse maybe something dangerous i don't know not, not really sure what to, what to think about that Maybe he's just a really messed up psychopath and to him it's all just about controlling people. I don't know, but it is very strange. It is very, very strange.
Iggy, I know, I know Iggy is a weird name, and obviously it's just him using these weird things. But yeah, it makes me think about Iggy Azalea immediately, who, by the way, did some very interesting stuff. She went to Saudi Arabia and had a concert in Saudi Arabia in, in Riyadh, the, the 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 capital of Saudi Arabia, where she put on a performance and sang a song that is called Goddess, where she basically sang bow down to your goddess or bow down to a goddess the song is like very blasphemous and she was on stage wearing very uh <laughs> wearing very very tight clothes and started uh twerking and shaking her body and stuff like that in saudi arabia i don't i that that's so that's so crazy to me to 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 think <laughs> I I want to cover that. I actually want to make a video on that because um, I think it says a lot about Saudi Arabia and where these countries that became rich due to oil are headed. They go further and further away from Islamic values, and it's it's fantastic to see. No, um, so Iggy She went to Saudi Arabia for a concert. She was there. Um, she did her performance, which was outrageous. People loved it, but it was pretty sexual. And I think she was halfway through the concert. She was told by the police to stop the concert. Pro apparently because her costume was uh, ripped open and you could see her legs, you could see her skin. But she says that it wasn't about that. She, she made a tweet where she said, um, that it was because of her message of uh, of female empowerment, and because she said uh, she appealed to the women to to scream and all that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I want to look into that a little bit further, and then actually make a video on that stuff because it's it is quite funny, quite interesting, and it's 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 really it's really 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 interesting that somebody like that actually gives a concert in Saudi Arabia. I could have never imagined something like that. Saudi Arabia is just allow. Wait a minute. Wait, is th what is this? Is this? Let me put this here on the screen. I'm just looking to through her Twitter right now. I don't want to get copyrighted here. For is this in Saudi Arabia? Is this a Saudi Arabian? Is this that place? It's not Mecca, I know. <laughs> no, this is a different one. Okay, this is a different one. She's wearing a different costume here. But she had something. Where is that? Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, we see a lot of very good stuff when we go through her Twitter. <laughs> um, here, she had this outfit. And she was dancing in that, in Saudi Arabia. Oh, here, I think this is from Saudi Arabia. I think this is from Saudi Arabia. She, she's wearing something on top of, but she was dancing in very suggestive way. Oh no, now I'll get copy, copyright striked. But anyway, so she was doing some interesting dance and some interesting performance there. And and as far as I have read, the team in Saudi Arabia even knew that she was going to sing a song named Goddess, which contains lyrics like, as far as I've seen, uh, speaking of prophets, uh, no man can tell us something, something, bow down to a goddess. She, 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 rap, she sings or raps that in Saudi Arabia, the home, the, <laughs> the birthplace of Islam. That's just, that's so funny to me. Very impressive stuff. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, I know, I know, I know, Namidin. I'll, I'll cover this uh, on a different occasion. I'll probably make a video on this. So, uh, Grow Better said, chip in a little when I can. Ex Muslims need all support they can get. Vile ideology. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, I need, I need all your support, all your, your support, all your help in continuing this. I'm supposed to. I, I'm, I'm meant to. 
I'm planning on publishing a video this week on this and also something else. I want to do some more stuff. But yeah, I appreciate your contributions and your support for this channel. Um, Seth is from the Grindcore band A AXCX. That's probably not how you say it, right? Ford saw said emotionally. How do you deal with Muslims constantly asserting that they know the absolute truth? P.S. Love your wisdom. Much love for my Christian. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I know it's, it, I mean, it's outrageous, but they actually believe with all their hearts that they are completely right and you are completely wrong and that you are just a corrupter. Because that's what Islam basically tells them. That's what Islam teaches. Islam th teaches that the enemies of Islam are following their desires, and they are like the Pharaoh, and they are out there to to be to destroy your religion. But of course, your religion is stronger than that. Can you blame them for then thinking that way? It's just all really difficult. Matthew F said he only loves himself and his money. He seared his conscience. Uh, and thus has just a little love for his young fans as he did for these vulnerable women. I don't really think that he has any love for his fans at all. I think he doesn't care about his fans. And they are just a lot of idiots out there thinking, yes, we love Andrew Tate and he loves us. He doesn't care about you. You're minions to him. That's what I think. Jordan is bulldozer said, uh, I heard the Osho had fire food, though. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know much about him except that one video and some documentary that I saw parts of. Blessed said, they need to play the chocolate meme from SpongeBob. I'm not familiar with it. Grover said, as a Muslim, uh, this pisses me off. Women are for uh, our use, not our consideration. Yeah, yeah. Very terrible stuff. Very, <laughs> very terrible stuff. Deanna said exactly. All right. That's it. Um, they are treating him like a god. Andrew Tate is the Antichrist. He loves taking their money. That's about it. And they love giving it to him. And he loves then bragging about it. Bragging about how he scammed people. So is Andrew Tate guilty or not? Uh, by definition, he definitely is guilty. But when it comes to the legal aspect, he's currently awaiting trial. And I'm pretty confident, just like many others, that he will be found guilty. So, because we can all see that he is guilty. <laughs> Maria La Lee Vegas said, here are chocolates, AP. No, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Please, nobody sent me boxes of chocolates. I don't want boxes of chocolates. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I was talking about when they kept asking about chocolate to be interviewed, but good show tonight as always. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, I'll I will leave. Uh, do not send me a box of chocolate boxes of chocolate. Uh my wife said, for your information, I'm pretty sure Sneeko admitted to being part of the war room. I, I'm pretty sure I also saw footage of him in the past where he he has he he was he poses he posed with war room members and was basically standing with them. Sneeko is a scumbag anyway. Um <clears throat> AXCX stands for yeah. Okay. I okay, now I get it. That makes sense. Now I get it. Now I want to look into it. Good night, said Sarah and sent me chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> Namidian said ban chocolate. Uh respect you have the balls. Thank you. I do. I actually do. Biologically speaking, I do. Um yes, thanks everybody. Have a, <laughs> I will see you again very soon. Have a fantastic day. And as always, wait a minute, I want to play some sounds here just to try it out. I need to install some more sounds. Uh, nope. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm gonna see if that works again. I just want to enjoy this. Yeah. I can play them all at once. I, mean, <laughs> I feel like a child right now. I found a new toy and is really enjoying it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. See you soon and have a fantastic day. And stay away from pimps. I know I need some more meme sounds. I, I will have to install them. Uh, bro, is this your outro song? No, my outro song. I don't have an outro song. I should have one. I want to have an outro song with this. Stay away from a slap. Stay away from a slap. I, I want that to be mixed and turned into a song. Stay away from a slap. Stay away from a slap. I think that would be a perfect outro music for me. And I'm pretty sure Sajid Lippin would appreciate it very much as well. He would feel happy about it. And yeah. Stay away from chocolate, everybody. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you soon. And listen to the man. Stay away from a slap. Stay away from a slap.